It's been 10 years and I was 17 when this first came out, but hear me out, somehow, this film is my childhood. Stick together! Paddington. Paddington is a talking bear with a British accent living in the deepest, darkest jungles of Peru or something like that. And I'm just on board immediately when I hear this. I'm just like, hell yeah. But after a tragedy, his Aunt Lucy decides to go live in the home for retired bears. Is that like the farm where they sent my dog? I, yeah. And she tells Paddington to piss off, but in the nicest way possible. She tells him to go to London and he's all like, oh, I hope they like bears there. Fortunately, Paddington, most people here do prefer bears to men. Genuinely though, when she's telling him, like, she's putting the neck tag on him and saying, back where the Explorer came from, there was this war, and people used to put their children in, with neckties in train stations and leave them there, hoping other people would look after them, and they did. Ugh, this, this film, like, it's, so much of it is goofy and silly in a fun, nice, chill way. And then there's just these moments that come out of nowhere. They're like little darts that hit you of either powerful, surprising emotion or actually amazing comedy. And that's where it really nails it. You're confined in certain ways when you try to tell the origin story of a superhero, because that's what Paddington is, I tell you. But they manage to blend the ridiculous with the wondrous here, and most importantly of all, the word that encapsulates this entire franchise, the charming. You take a fun-loving bear with a great history, you plop him down in the middle of a world where people are like, I didn't know bears could talk, but they're also surprisingly British and chill about finding a bear who could talk. And uh, then you just add in a turkey stuffing load of great British actors. Just surround him with people and have them all play it dead serious as if like they're playing, they're, they're Scrooge in Muppet's Christmas Carol. You've got the whole Brown family here. Mr. Brown is kind of this initial antagonist almost. He really just doesn't want a bear living in his house, which honestly, a little bit of a spoil sport, but kind of fair. And then the bear destroys his bathroom and he still doesn't throw him out. So uh, compared to the dad role, who's kind of fed up with these things, like in any of these family films, I feel like he does amazingly well and comes around surprisingly quickly. The important thing about a film like this is that you don't ask too many questions. Don't ask how Paddington had that many marmalade jars, but no fecal material on his lifeboat. Don't ask how their entire house wasn't destroyed when he flooded it. Don't ask why they chose that hairstyle for Nicole Kidman, because it kind of works. There's something alluring about her as a short-haired, like, mad scientist thing. I don't know. There are so many goofy, silly sequences in this, but as I say, the film really excels where it suddenly hits you with a moment of, like, true, genuine comedy. Like, bare left in a hundred yards. There's just some jokes that are, like, next level and make you go, damn. Because you're just enjoying this film as a sort of friendly, happy, chill thing. And then it hits you with these surprising moments where it, it levels itself up in terms of both comedy and just family fun and, and slight emotion. It's not like a Pixar, you're going to cry kind of thing, but it is, it's just got enough of that emotional power and hold over you that it can just play us all like puppet strings this entire franchise, honestly. This film is the height of Family Guy style cutaway gags for all ages. Uh, Nicole Kidman and Peter Capaldi are such enchanting villains. They're just very fun and friendly for villains, if you know what I mean. Um, this film is the kind of, it's like a person who just enters your life and ingratiates themselves with you until you reach the point where you just can't hate them and you have to love them. And that's, that's what all of these films are, really, because you're just watching it like, yeah, I guess it's fine. Every time I rewatch it, I'm like, yeah, it's, it's Paddington, it's nice. And then by the end, I'm like, yeah. But I have never truly loved the Paddington movies as the perfect encapsulation of cinema that some people seem to think they are. At the same time, I've watched this one... I don't know, four or five times now, maybe. And I just find it highly rewatchable and fun. And surpri I'm surprised every time by how fun I do find it. So I think the moral is always have a bear in your home, no matter how much of a criminal that bear is. He, he commits way more crimes in the second one. Or no, he commits more crimes in this one, but gets blamed for them in the second one, whereas he just gets away with it all in this one. So I'm giving Baddington Bear four stars. Only in a British film could you have an old lady drinking a man under the table as part of the big finale sequence thing. You just, you couldn't get away with that in an American film. You'd think, oh, she has an alcohol problem. It's just something about Americans. They're just, you know. Anyway, uh, please subscribe. You too, Americans. <laughs>